It's Freedom Files with James Burns on American Freedom Radio. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is June 30th, 2011, the last day of June. Wow, the uh, year is all, well, halfway over already. And um, Well, if it's uh, the next half is as uh, wonderful as this half, uh, hopefully 2012 will be better. I am James Burns, your host, joined, of course, by the one and only Bob Chapman. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Bob, how have you been, sir? Just fine, thank you. Nice to be back. That's wonderful to have you back on the show, Bob. I think the uh, big thing we're going to break into today is probably something that ties in together the situation in Greece and the U.K. and Europe, as well as the United States. It does seem like that there's a domino effect happening. Well, there would have been a bigger domino effect if the president and the socialist ruling party in Greece hadn't approved that agreement. Uh, we don't know what they're going to have to sell off, but uh, the Greek people are furious, and uh, I wouldn't give a plug nickel for the life of those socialists. I mean, a lot of them, a number of them have already been beaten by people, and uh, I would say next some of them are going to get killed. People are really bent out of shape in that country over what Papandreou, who's not only a Marxist, but he's a member of the Illuminati, as was his father, Andres. And so I don't think you've heard the end of that over there yet. And there's always the possibility of a military coup in the country. And the military has said that. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, I was, saw, I was looking at photos the other day, and it's reminiscent of what happened last year because they had massive protests last year in Greeks, but it seems to be going to the next level. I mean, virtually... <laughs> the country is on fire right now, and I think the people are pretty fed up over there. And it's not just Greece. It's you know, several other countries. It's the U.K. They're going on strike there. Uh, you know, Most of Europe is in serious trouble, and it looks like it's eventually going to head our way, too. Well, you're right. There'll be a chain effect. And one of the underlying reasons is that three years ago, we found out what the Fed did. But we only found out about a year ago. Not even that long. But anyway, uh, Bloomberg took the Fed Reserve to court. They lost. They appealed. It took two years. And finally, we found out where all the money went. And they're talking a few trillion dollars when, in fact, the figure is $13.8 trillion. And the majority of it, about 60%, was lent to foreign banks as well as American banks and corporations the anointed, anointed uh, fellow members of the Illuminati, uh, like McDonald's and Harley Davidson, General Electric, a number of insurance companies, uh, seven of them, seven major insurance companies to be exact, uh, got the TARP funds. I think one paid it back. The Hartford and the rest of them did not, as far as I know. But these things change every day. And so you have this interconnectivity that they've created in order to bring the world financial system into a one-world financial system. Now, the weaknesses in central power control are that if something goes wrong, you really got a problem. you got no place to go, no place to hide, no solutions. And that's where they're at right now. And the only thing that they can do is have the creation of more money and credit now called quantitative easing. And against the charter of the European Central Bank, they have been creating money and credit illegally, just as the Fed has, but they've done it legally because it's in their charter. But it's not in their charter to be giving loans to European banks and corporations. That's why they were hiding it, and they wanted to hide the amount of money involved. The loans to Greece, and this is a ballpark figure, it's about $450 billion, of which $120 billion is guaranteed by the bankers in New York who sold 
the European banks' credit default swaps. And essentially what was happening is that they will lay, the European banks were laying off part of their action to the New York banks, just like insurance syndicates do. Uh, not unusual, uh, especially when they're all in bed together. Uh, the uh, There was a piece, of, well, actually three pieces came through, which really surprised me today, on Iceland. And they told uh, England and Holland and others to take a hike. They want to run their country the way they want. So I guess they'll be like Libya and Afghanistan and Iraq. They'll probably get invaded soon because they look cross-eyed at somebody. And the ramifications, which are not going to go away, there's no way that the Greek people are going to put up with another 15% reduction in wages, which would bring them over a year to a 50% reduction. In other words, you were making 1,000 euros a month, now you make 500. Uh, it's not going to be very li li livable. And the interest is enormous at high rates. And uh, my calculations show it'll take about 50, that's five zero years to pay off what they owe to the bankers who should have never made the loans in the first place and created the money out of thin air like they always do and have for centuries, but usually at nine to one ratio, not 50 and 100 times their deposit base. And so all of the European banks are broke. The American banks, the big ones, are broke. And nothing is being fixed. QE1 bailed out the financial communities in Europe and the United States, and in England for that matter as well. And uh, England's in worse shape than everybody. Uh, QE2 is bailing out the governments and their problems that need bailing out. In the United States, it's the Treasury, the same in England, and we're looking at the six countries that are in trouble financially. And uh, the, the bill for Europe a bailout bill, if all six were to go down that are in trouble, uh, the bill would be somewhere between four and six trillion dollars. I projected four trillion a year ago, May, before all this hubbub started. And now they're realizing that's what the number is. And were they to bail them all out or have to or contemplate it, it would bankrupt all of the solvent countries in Europe, such as Germany, France, Holland, Finland, Austria, the main strong members of the Eurozone. And so it's going to be interesting to see what in the future transpires in Greece, because I believe there's a 50-50 chance they'll have a revolution. And it won't last long and the army will join the people. And they've already said that. And uh, so that's what I expect to happen. And uh, the violence in Greece has been pretty low level. I mean, you've seen a lot of smoke bombs and, and tear gas and uh, rubber bullets being uh, used, but nothing super serious. Um, they're going to take it to the next level, I think. They being the people. Four million people. Two million people who might get involved. They even cut that in half, a million people. I, I don't think that the military nor law enforcement wants to tangle with that. And um, I received uh, an email this morning, and uh, they're starting to round up they, the people, uh, starting to round up the inventory of weapons that they have. And I, my guess is I go to the military and say, look, you know, we got 50,000 men under arms here. You want to join us? Uh, do we have to shoot you? And I think that's what it's going to come to. Uh, all of those old schmizes that the Germans lost there in 
1940, uh, they're coming out of wherever they are. <laughs> but um, uh, that's the way I see that going. Uh, you have not heard the end of all the financial problems over there. And uh, you don't hear much about England unless you read the forecaster, because I pick up all this stuff about Europe and England, and um, we get a great deal out of countries that we have subscribers in. And um, you've really yet to hear of the horrid problems we're going to have in America. And that'll start next month in July. And that's going to surprise everybody when they find out what dreadful condition the municipalities and the states are in. And uh, you know, everything that the people want everywhere is being thwarted by the politicians of the court system. And uh, you can't do that forever <laughs> because people have a limit to what they're willing to take that's illegal. And uh, I think from there, uh, you're going to see real problems. I mean, I, I just think that this whole thing is inevitable, Bob. I mean, you, you had the people in Greece for at least a year now. They've been protesting against this corruption and all this stuff going on there. You've had people in the United States protesting as well and throughout the rest of the world and, you know, countless countries that are dealing with basically the same problems, all of which were by design. And the powers that be, the government's not listening to the people. They didn't listen to us uh, in 2008 when it came to the banker bailouts. They didn't listen to us when it came to Obamacare. Are with now currently the war in Libya, likewise with Greece. So it's, it's only a matter of time before the people finally realize, well, they're not listening to us anymore. Our own elected officials who are supposed to represent we the people are no longer you know, listening. They've got their hands in their ears and they're taking their orders from somebody else. Uh, in this issue that's coming up on the sad day, I have a poll in there. And 75% uh, of the people believe that their congressmen don't listen to them at all and only listen to the rich and big business who are buying them off. It, it's quite a poll. I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised because it's what I've been saying for a long time. And uh, I guess maybe being on the radio as much as I am, uh, I guess maybe a lot of people have heard me say that, and others say it too, but not many. And most people don't want to touch it. Uh, they want to be acceptable, and I don't care about being acceptable. I call it the way I see it, and if you don't like it, don't listen. And like unfortunately, it. I've been right most of the time. Absolutely. You've been right, I would say, 99.9% .9 of the time. And, you know, that, I mean, with this poll, it, I mean, I know firsthand experience that they don't listen to me. I mean, I've sent my congressmen, my senators, I've even sent the White House letters about things, and they all, every now and then when they do send you back a reply, it's always a BS uh, PC reply that really had nothing to do with what you were inquiring about or what you were asking about. And you're just sitting back going, did you guys even bother to read my my concern, what I wanted you to vote for, what I wanted you to vote against, obviously they didn't. They didn't. And they don't care. Because they're getting paid off. It's called campaign time contributions and lobbying. And uh, all they want to do is get reelected to get that retirement pay and run about looking like the great poobah. And uh, that's the way they think. And uh, the conditions that we have, the laws that we have presently have to be changed. And there's no way that Congress is voluntarily going to do that, no matter how many people talk to them, write to them, et cetera. And so when you get to that stage, there will be a trigger. It will happen. And uh, then the de demonstrations will come. The federalized police will act like Nazis, and they'll probably get liquidated. And um, that's too bad, but uh, I know many of them listen to me on the radio, but walk away. Turn your badge in. It's better than being dead. Because Americans, once they start, they'll be dead serious, and they get better weapons than the police have. And the police know that. They've they got to be dummies to listen to the federal government. And who knows what's going to happen to their families. You know, when people get going, they don't leave any stones unturned. So I fear for them. So they better smarten up. 
I, I sincerely hope, Bob, that most of the police officers out there and men and women in uniform are going to do what you believe that they're going to do and join us, just like what it looks like uh, the military in Greece is going to do uh, if the time comes for revolution there. I sincerely hope that they're thinking about this, the fact that it's not getting any better, it's getting worse in this country, and I think they're going to have to make a decision. Either they're on our side or they're on the side of tyranny. And it's a hard decision for them because uh, that the, uh, most of them, it's a life's work. Some of them have been involved for 15, 25, 30 years. And um, it's not easy to, to give up your pension and everything else uh, because you believe in something. I mean, you get families to feed, uh, they'll lose their pensions. But, you know, on the flip side is if they are told to go out and pick up everybody with hazel eyes, and put them in trucks and bring them to internment camps, uh, they got to make a decision. That's very true. And you know something? If they're afraid of losing their pension by turning against the powers that be, they're going to lose their pension anyways. I mean, there's several examples in several states right now that are hurting so badly that they're diving into you know government employees' pensions. So that's going to happen one way or the other. The federal government is as well. That's how they're financing the government uh, from June until August the 2nd. And that figure is going to be about $275 billion. And even if they sign an agreement on the extension of the cash uh, debt uh, from 14.3 to $16.7 trillion, uh, how are they going to pay that money back? No one's talked about that. Yeah. And That's a good question, Bob. We've got, we got to go to break, though. We'll cover the sure. national debt ceiling situation coming up right after this. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. More Freedom Files coming up right after this, right here on American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon. It is June 30th, 2011. James Burns, along with my guest, Bob Chabin. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. And as promised, we're going to go into the national debt ceiling. Uh, Bob, uh, our congressman here in my district, uh, he uh, uh, he likes to use Facebook, you know, try and interact with the um, his constituents. And uh, he actually left a message a couple days ago, like, how many of you um, are in favor of raising the debt ceiling? How many of you are opposed to it? And it looked like 99% of the people posting were against it. They were completely against raising the debt ceiling. I get a feeling, Bob, that that's probably the same pulse as the rest of the country. I think 9 out of 10 people are against the idea, including Congressman Ron Paul. All we have to do is have what we may not have is a statesman, someone who understands the problems of great experience in life, business, perhaps Washington, perhaps in finance and economics, who's going to stand up and say, look, here I am, I'm running for president, and these are our problems, and he outlines them and says, the only way this can be solved is by doing away with the Federal Reserve and purging the system. All of those banks, corporations that are bankrupt, we've got to let them go under. And it's going to be awful. 50% of the public is going to be out of work. But this is what we've got to do from a classical economic and financial viewpoint. There is no other way. And these people who have screwed up the system deliberately will be dealt with legally later. And so this is what we've got to do, and we've got to do it together. And if you're not willing to do so, you may as well get up, get on a plane and get out of here. I agree entirely, Bob. And I, my fear is that despite the fact you have a number of congressmen, including Ron Paul, who are completely against the debt ceiling being raised, you have so much fear going on in Washington from President Obama and so many others, and... I think that they're going to pull the same crap over us that they've been doing. The people are against it, but that doesn't matter anymore. They're going to do it anyways. And that will eventually lead to revolution, unfortunately. I mean, just look at history. It's replete with this sort of thing. And you can go back 1,000, 2,000 years. It's all there. And you push the people just so far. And the further they push, the worse the situation's going to be putting it off and putting it off, kicking the can down the road, as they call it today. And the ultimate outcome is the people who caused all this and continue to cause it 
are going to have some serious problems. And uh, once it starts in Greece, if it does, it'll spread all over Europe. And it'll spread to the United States. And so the bankers in Wall Street, City of London, they think they're the masters of the universe. They know better what's good for us than we do. And we should do what they tell us to do. And we should accept world government, which they're going to run and screw up like they've screwed everything else up. Well, there's a lot of bright people in this world. Many, many of them far brighter than this crime syndicate that we've got in many countries. And so once the game gets going, the adversarial challenge will be very tough for them. And you know, there's not many of them throughout the world. Maybe 10,000, 15,000. It's a drop in the bucket. So if you are able, in purging the system, to remove their power structure, they're standing there naked. There's nothing they can do. And then when we start bringing up the questions, well, why did you do this and why did you do that? Uh, Were you aware it was against the law? against the Constitution, they won't have an answer because they don't believe in the Constitution. They don't believe in our way of life, our government, our religions. Again, they're the masters of the universe. Ask them, they'll tell you. Look at the way they act. Arrogant, brazen. Look at the way they tremble when they have problems. Uh, Point out St. St. Moritz. I should say St. Moritz. I always use the French. But anyway, I speak both French and German. Uh, They had a gentleman uh, from the Northern League in Italy, which is a political party, who's a member of the European Parliament, go to the gate and say, uh, this is against Swiss law. This is a secret meeting. It's political, and you're not supposed to be holding it. And I want to go in and see what they're talking about. Well, I belted the guy, threw him headfirst into the concrete, broke his nose, lacerated his face, then kicked him a few times for good measure. And these were private guards which were hired from Germany, Eastern Germany, most of them ex-Stasi employees. And Stasi was like the KGB, for those of you who don't know. And if you don't know what the KGB was, (laughs) it was the Russian secret external police. And now it's the FSB. And the Stasi was their equal number. In fact, Mr. Putin used to work for the KGB, which I'm very well aware of because I used to spy against them. That's some interesting parts of my life. And the truth is, But the point is, they cringed and ran. I said they cringed at St. Moritz, and they ran. They left in the middle of the night on Saturday night. There was nobody left on Sunday. And Henry Kissinger was there, and there were four uh, congressmen from the country of Switzerland who had an arrest warrant for him. And the only way they could have taken him out was through the woods and then by helicopter because all the roads were loaded with Swiss police. They were looking for him. I mean, this is the kind of degenerate people that we're dealing with. And he's very, very much disliked in Europe because he's recognized as a horrible pedophile. And uh, that's been going on for years. Yeah, eventually he's going to get his. I mean, you have these small-level pedophiles. They're always caught, and and justice is done swiftly to them. But you have these you know, big, giant pedophile rings throughout the world with these uh, monsters in the elite, and they, they get away with so much stuff. And eventually, I have to believe, Bob, that all of this is going to come out on them, and it's just going to add more fuel to the fire. Well, I, I think you're right, and uh, I, I truly believe that we are going to prevail, and we're going to pay a terrible price to do it. But we weren't watching, watching, and we weren't listening. We weren't doing what we're supposed to do in regard to our government and our way of life and our freedom. And um, we've wasted all of the blood and tears and anguish of our predecessors who kept this country together for us fought for it, and uh, died for it, 
and uh, we can't let that happen to our culture. And so that's why I do what I do, and you as well. And there are a handful of others. Unfortunately, there's not millions. There's not even thousands. But I'll tell you one thing. We are having a great impact, and I'm very happy about that. Me too, Bob. And I, I think there are parallels between what we're doing here and what happened during the American Revolution. I bring this up because obviously in a couple of days is July 4th, the Independence Day. And what are your thoughts about the way people celebrate Independence Day now and also, like, the direction our country is heading. We talk about how history repeats itself. I believe that that's the case. I believe we're getting in that situation. We're not, we're not at the same level yet as the men who fought and died in all those battles and, you know, you know froze to death at Valley Forge. But I think we're, we're getting there. Well, we're a heck of a lot better armed, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and uh, that is uh, of great concern. And, you know, I see uh, openly... Uh, people who are in and associated with the Illuminati talking about and copying, talking openly among the public about the possibility of civil unrest in the United States. The governments, that's the municipalities, the state, the federal government, they run out of money. This system is corrupt. They're in debt, the, a debt that can never be paid off. And they're very concerned, and they should be. Because we got their number. Yes, we do. And it, it's sad, though, because I, I think that there's a huge chunk of the population in this country who don't recognize the importance, the meaning of July 4th, of Independence Day. They just see it as a day to eat hot dogs and watch fireworks. But, I mean, there's a growing number of Americans that honestly do see it. They do recognize what it meant. It's about you know standing up to tyranny, fighting for a cause. Even if you're in a minority, like the, the founders were back in the day when they were fighting for independence against the British crown, that, that's where we are now. But it's, it's not just against the British crown. It's against this, this new old order crown at the, the top of the pyramid itself. You're absolutely correct. And uh, since the mid-1990s as a writer and one who spent 29 years in the brokerage business in finance and economics... I wrote and railed heavily against the termination of the Glass-Steagall Act. And most people don't know what that is. In 1933, the American Congress found that one of the main reasons for the collapse of the American economy was these blind trusts and pools that they had, but also the collaboration of banks which could sell insurance and be involved in the brokerage business as opposed to per pure commercial and international banking. And so they created the Glass-Steagall Act, which set up a Chinese wall, as they called it, in those days. And I haven't heard it lately, but I heard it up to 1995-99. And they passed the, uh, an act, uh, Graham, Phil Graham was the sponsor of Bliley and somebody else, I can't remember, but they, they passed legislation doing away with it. And we need it back. We desperately need it back to bake up these banking combines. We get the same problem with them, among other things, that we had in the early 1930s. And so we have a bill that has just been reintroduced, but it's a new bill, into Congress, H.R. 1489. And it's called the Return to Prudent Banking Act. And it's got a number of sponsors. Um, we've got Mike Kaufman, uh, Roscoe Barnett, Walter Jones, and of course Marge Kaptur of Ohio, who's ramroding, ramroding this thing. Now you got to remember, this is going to be very, very difficult to get passed because 95% of the people in Congress are owned, lock, stock, and barrel by the bankers, Wall Street, insurance pharmaceutical companies, 
and transnational corporations. But that's what we've got to do. We've got to get rid of the ability of banking to be able to do what they're doing now. They've been running roughshod for the last 15 years, actually 12 years. Um, it is probably one of the worst reversals of legislation ever. And Phil Graham, the last I saw, was working for Union Bank Suisse. Now, that was his payoff. And I'm sure they're giving him a princely salary. So people, tell your congressman that you want H.R. 1489, the Return to Prudent Banking Act, passed. That and free trade have to be done away with. We need the new act passed, bringing black back Glass-Steagall via the Return to Prudent Banking Act, and we need tariffs on goods and services to recreate a level playing field for workers in America to be able to compete with foreign slave labor. I, I agree entirely, Bob. we got to go to a break. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. You're listening to Freedom Files on American Freedom Radio. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files live on this Thursday afternoon, June 30th, 2011. James Burns, along with my guest, Bob Chapman. His website, internationalforecaster.com, theinternationalforecaster.com. And before the break, Bob was talking about H.R. 1489, the Return to Prudent Banking Act. And I agree with this idea entirely. We need to go back to Glass-Steagall because I've noticed a trend here, Bob. Uh, once upon a time, the government, for the most part, used to stand against these banks and corporations. But over the past couple of decades, you've had Wall Street, the banks, big oil, big energy, the food industry, the military industrial complex, the healthcare industry, the big pharma, and the prison industrial complex seeping their control within the government, not only with our elected officials, but all our different departments and agencies. And that's really part of the problem here, I think. Well, it certainly is. Uh, and what it is is they had given 12 years ago back to the brokerage and banking community a absolute license to steal. Now, we already know that the Federal Reserve was enacted as a, a license to steal as well. So now they have another instrument which they've been using, <laughs> and it's even worse than it was in the early 1930s, 1920s. And so it's a very, very important piece of legislation, just like the audit the Fed bill was, which got defeated. But we got to keep on hammering at these people legislatively as much as we can, even if we lose. Because people, the constituents, the American citizens, they're standing by and they're learning from this. They're learning about these people's ability to loot the country legally and take away lifetimes of hard work. I mean, how do you think federal employees feel right now with the government up until August 2nd taking $275 billion from the federal pension account. I mean, what are they going to do next? Get Congress to allow them to commandeer all pension plans? There's a bill to that effect. No number. And there's another one in the Senate to limit you. That has no number either. To limit you as to how much money you can take out of your retirement fund and how often you can do it. But the government wants to, when they think they can get away with it, give you a guaranteed government annuity from a bankrupt government in replace of the stocks and the bonds and whatever that you've got in your retirement account. This is the tack that they're on. They think if they can get this money, which is $6 trillion and $6 trillion, from the federal as well as the private, they can keep on doing what they're doing indefinitely. 
this is their thinking. And we've got to stop them from doing it. Most definitely, Bob. And we have to stop them because it's, they're sucking us dry from so many angles. I mean, <laughs> all these big, giant corporations, the banks, Wall Street, the Federal Reserve, they're all, they're all you know, at the trough right now. And <laughs> basically, the, the well is running dry here. And unfortunately, the people don't seem to understand it. They're so busy playing the two-party puppet show, uh, one side blaming all the Democrats, the other side blaming all the Republicans, when the truth is most of the Republicans and most of the Democrats are in on it. Ninety-five percent of them are in on it. And they'll give you that big smile and stab you in the back. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I, uh, when uh, you were going to be on the show, we had some technical difficulties, unfortunately. But uh, one of the things I was going to bring up a couple of weeks ago was uh, the fact that several Congress critters, including former Speaker Nancy Pelosi's wealth, had uh, basically skyrocketed ever since she became Speaker of the House. And this is nothing new. I mean, these guys come in, and they surprisingly end up having way more money than they did before You know, they took a congressional seat or a Senate seat. And obviously, the, it, it doesn't add up because their, their uh, senatorial or congressional paycheck doesn't equal the amount of money that they're making. They have perpetual inside information. They are called by people who they know or they have dinner with them who might be in the brokerage industry or banking or one of the governmental departments to tell them, look, we're going to do this, that, and the other thing. And so if you want to enrich yourself by such and such companies or this company, it goes on all the time. And in the brokerage business itself, and I was in there, they break the rules millions of times a day for billions of dollars that they steal from people. Unbelievable. And they get away with it. And then when they get caught, they go to usually the SEC as a civil proceeding. And what happens is they neither admit nor deny and either they or their company is fined, usually the company. And they go right back the next day and do it all over again. So that's the largesse, the politicians in America, the Pelosi's of this world have access to. Everything in the market is rigged today. They have a thing called the President's Working Group on Financial Markets, signed as an executive order in August of 1988 by Ronald Reagan. And it lets them do anything they want. Truly a license to steal. That's scary. That they have that After 52 power. years, there's very little that I don't know about the brokerage business and banking. I mean, it, it is really scary, Bob, that they have that kind of power. I mean, you have low-level people that would do the same thing, and they get caught, and they get sent away. Yet you have these big, giant fish. They do it all the time. And yet every now and then they, they throw up a sacrificial lamb like a wiener or a blago. Meanwhile, the rest of them are doing it as well. Well, just look at Goldman Sachs. They stole $5 billion by misrating bond bonds that contain mortgages. They were fined, they copped a plea, $770 million. So they got to keep $4 billion. Crime in America pays. Uh, this Warren Buffett, his firm, Berkshire Hathaway, stole $300 million from the United States government by falsifying their tax records. They get fined. In each, each instance, the companies paid the fines. They get fined $100 million and got to keep $200 million. I'm sure we'd all like a job like that. This goes on every single day, all day long. It's really sad because I, I want to believe in this system, Bob, but unfortunately, as long as most of the majority of the criminals out there, these leeches, and I'm sorry to use that word because it's an insult to real leeches, are doing this while they only sacrifice, you know, maybe a, one or two of them at a time just to make us look like we're uh, having some real justice in this country. I mean, it, it just shows you what kind of farce it is. You're right. And every country has the same kind of problems, the same corrupt people. And they're always going to be with us. You know, they, they talk about the probably the greatest known orator of all time, Cicero. He was a politician. He was a senator. And um, he was corrupt. And one day he picked the wrong side. And he was decapitated. Maybe we should bring back law, Roman law. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I mean, I, I don't know if that's going to happen, but I do think it's going to, if it continues to go this way, it's going to get very, very nasty. Uh, Bob, in the final minute we have left, how can people get the international forecaster? The forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. Published by email on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Runs around 40 pages each time. We have a hard copy that goes out twice a month for those people who are not on the Internet. And everything you need to know every week is in that publication. You can get a free introductory copy by going to theinternationalforecaster.com. The International F O R E C A S T E R dot com or to www dot i n t f o r e c a s t e r dot com int forecaster dot com. If you would like to get a question answered, and we answer everybody, or a copy of either of the hard copy or digital public publication. Or if you'd like to get a copy of our latest gold and silver recommendations, you can email us, Bob, B-O-B, at intforecaster.com. Bob at I-N-T-F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R.com. For those of you who would like to call in toll-free, that number is 877-479-8178. That's 877-479-8178. Four seven nine eight one seven eight. You can get either copy there, and they have a special offering of a free one year subscription. The deal that they're offering is terrific. Take advantage of it. It absolutely is, Bob. Have a great Independence Day weekend. I will talk to you next week, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you all for listening. Bye bye.